Yes. I came to collect a head. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie prequel bombs. Got myself a bullet. The wound's fresh, maybe an hour old. I can't remember how I got it. For this list, we'll be looking at the preludes to successful franchises that failed to connect to the box office. Which film series deserves another prequel? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, The Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. She's gonna blow! <laughs> I got three stomachs. Cut me some slack. For a franchise based in the prehistoric era, going back further for a prequel shouldn't have been a stretch. And on paper, showing how Fred and Barney met Wilma and Betty is a pretty good pitch. The issue? Viva Rock Vegas gambled it all on a brand new cast, with none of the actors from the 1994 film, and got royally flushed out of the conversation. <laughs> oh, you want a date? <laughs> well gone out with men who said less. <laughs> so even though this follow-up had marginally better reviews, it couldn't match the success of its predecessor. In fact, it couldn't even make back its own budget in theaters. With numbers like that, we don't think the Flintstones will be vacationing to Rock Vegas again anytime soon. <laughs> you are serious. How embarrassing for you. Number nine, The Huntsman Winter's War. Queen. We'll have that. Queen. It doesn't take a magic mirror to see why this ill-advised franchise got lost in the woods. In 2012, the original Snow White and the Huntsman overcame its mixed reception thanks to the classic story and Kristen Stewart's star power, two things that this prequel lacked. Stripped of everything that made it stand out, Winter's War turned into a painfully generic fantasy flick. There, she built her fortress and ruled as the Ice Queen. And not even a particularly good one, despite the efforts of its committed cast, both audiences and critics agreed that this Huntsman prequel wasn't worth a trip to the multiplex. Instead, the wannabe franchise starter turned out to be a poisoned apple that spoiled the whole bunch. My army of Huntsmen will grow until nothing will stand in its path. So you see the game is not finished. Number eight, Sin City, a dame to kill for. At least I know they're bad guys. Nothing wrong with killing the bunch of them. Hell, it's practically my civic duty. What's the opposite of striking when the iron's hot? The answer is Sin City, a dame to kill for. Despite being based upon the same comic series as the original film, it took an inexplicable nine years for the star-studded follow-up to hit theaters. Based on the result, it's clear that they shouldn't have bothered. One of these days she'll pull the trigger, and then there's nothing I can do. The lengthy wait between installments killed any momentum the film series may have had, and not even the returning cast could change that. Even though the prequel had a bigger budget, A Dame to Kill For failed to match even a quarter of the original film's box office. That's a sinful result indeed. My compliments to your surgeon, Mr. McCarthy. A remarkable transformation. But you still have the eyes. The eyes of a dead man. Number 7, The King's Man. My father also brought me here for my first suit. Kingsman, world's finest tailor. The name is a bit confusing, but as it turns out, this movie is actually an origin story for the Kingsman universe. Then again, confused is a good way to describe the King's Man overall. While the original films are known for their stylish action and R-rated humor, anyone expecting that here was left disappointed. Rather, the King's Man is a subdued character piece about fatherhood in World War I. I wish your mother could see you now. She would have been so proud. I hope so, Father. It's not bad by any means, but it's just not Kingsman. Audiences outright rejected this new direction, and said as much with their wallets. Let's just say that, much like actual undercover spies, this movie came and went without anyone noticing. I've informed Kitchener of your intention of joining up, and he has assured me that he will not let you slip through. Number six, Hannibal Rising. I hope you don't mind. I would have used a butcher's knife, but the sword seemed so appropriate. The scariest part of this horror flick isn't the gore or jump scares, it's the writing. To be fair, that's far from the only reason the movie underperformed. No, Rising was doomed from the get-go, because it required the filmmakers to recast the lead role. While Gaspar Ulio delivers an admirable performance as a younger Hannibal Lecter, Anthony Hopkins' Oscar-winning turn in the original The Silence of the Lambs overshadows the prequel. Do you think if you save poor Catherine, you could make them stop, don't you? You think if Catherine lives, you won't wake up in the dark ever again to that awful screaming of the lambs. 
In the end, Hannibal Rising took one of horror's most iconic characters and reduced him to a run-of-the-mill slasher villain. It had the poor profit margins to reflect that too, pulling in just $82 million on a budget of $50 million. He ate my sister. <laughs> so did you. Number 5. Exorcist The Beginning Do you miss it? Being a priest? No. Oh, there's no point in that. Sometimes I think the best view of God is from hell. In a brilliant bit of meta storytelling, this prequel didn't just go back in time, it also reversed in profit and audience reception too. Although, something tells us that wasn't intentional. To put it nicely, Exorcist the Beginning was a disaster. He's dead. How? I don't know. Some accident. Both its critical and commercial performance paled in comparison to the 1973 original. It couldn't even match the low bar of the series' less successful sequels. Directed by Rennie Harlan, the film had actually been retooled from Paul Schrader's Dominion prequel to The Exorcist. After Harlan's film bombed, Schrader was allowed to release his version, but it was not much better received. Whatever you hear, whatever you see, it's just his lies. Don't listen. Don't watch. You understand? Number 4. Gods and generals. I do not expect to live to see the end of this war. Nor can I say that without victory, I would desire to do so. It takes a village to make a movie, and train wrecks like this are why. Since most of Gods and Generals was financed by one man, there was nothing to stop the filmmakers from turning in a five hour snooze fest. You heard that right. The original cut of this Gettysburg prequel ran for five whole hours. It was trimmed down to three for the theatrical release, but the movie was unsalvageable. As well, that war is so terrible, but we should grow too fond of it. Gods and Generals was critically reviled and failed to recoup even a quarter of its production costs. While the parent movie Gettysburg eventually became a cult classic, there's no word of mouth coming to save Gods and Generals. It exists in every corner of the world, but that is no excuse for us to tolerate it here when we find it right before our very eyes in our own country. Number three, Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. And the angels wouldn't help you. Because they've all gone away. By 1992, the Twin Peaks television series had already hit the mainstream, fizzled out, and been unceremoniously canceled. But despite the clear writing on the wall, creator David Lynch marched ahead with this feature-length prequel, and it went about as well as you'd expect. Quit trying to hold on so tight. I'm gone. Long gone. Fire Walk With Me was too weird for casuals, and not satisfying enough for hardcores, which begs the question, who was this movie made for? Unfortunately, Fire Walk With Me didn't have a good answer, and it showed in the meager box office returns. If there's any silver lining, it's that the prequel has since been reevaluated as a benchmark of experimental storytelling. One more thing, Albert. When the next murder happens, you will help me solve it. Number two, The Thing. What was it doing to him? Well, it appears it was absorbing him. Don't let the title fool you. This 2011 film is most definitely not a remake of the 1982 classic, but even though it's a prequel through and through, the studio baffingly decided to give it the same name as the original. Unfortunately, the actual movie doesn't get any more creative than that either. Now, Lars has feelings. So he's human. It can't imitate inorganic material. Marred by slow pacing and unoriginal ideas, 2011's The Thing failed to impress any kind of audience. Not walk-ups, not critics, and certainly not longtime fans. Still, no one was more disappointed than the distributors, who had to write the movie off as a box office bomb. Maybe next time, they'll label their prequel accordingly. Your earring. It was your other ear. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Solo A Star Wars Story You were gone too long. I knew something must have gone wrong. This is nothing. You should see them. At a time when the galaxy far, far away was at the epicenter of the pop culture zeitgeist, a Han Solo spin-off film sounded like it would print money, but it had a pretty massive asterisk attached. It didn't star Harrison Ford. Production was troubled, with original directors Phil Lord and Christopher Miller replaced by Ron Howard midway. This did the castle run in 12 parsecs. <laughs> 
Not if you round down, buddy. When the origin story hit theaters, audiences made it clear that they weren't happy. So despite having one of the franchise's biggest budgets, Solo became the lowest grossing live action Star Wars movie to date. Clearly, the force was not strong with this one. No, I'm telling you, it's gonna be great. When have I ever steered you wrong? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.